with the fact that Seahawks training camp is currently underway, uh, bringing good news and not so good news. So getting into all of that, we'll get straight into our Seahawks part of the segment, which has uh, kind of been missing uh, for a good amount of time outside of pieces of news here and there. Uh, starting off with July 26, we're getting right into the injury-related news, which isn't great if you know how the show goes. Um, the team placed six players on the physically unable to perform list or the PUP list, if you abbreviate it, uh, starting with safety Jamal Adams, who, uh, if you are unaware of his previous or, I guess, more recent injury, uh, was a torn quadriceps tendon. Uh, he does have a chance to be ready for the start of the season. Inside linebacker Jordan Brooks also has a chance to be ready for the start of the season, uh, tearing his ACL last season. Uh, tight end Noah Fant, nose tackle Austin Faiolu, uh, nose tackle Brian Monet uh, tore his ACL last year as well, but he will likely miss some time during the course of this upcoming season. Uh, and then cornerback uh, Tariq Woolen had knee surgery this past, uh, well, this current, well, no, I guess technically this past offseason uh, had a knee surgery uh, as it had a kind of freak accident walking off the field uh, in offseason workouts with the Seahawks. So he isn't expected to miss a ton of time uh, as his recovery has already been taking place. And then also that same day on the 26th, uh, the team put nose tackle Jonah Tavai uh, on the active slash non-football injury list. So, so not great news to start off training camp, but considering the injuries that these players suffered, it makes sense uh, that they were put on the pup list to begin training camp. Uh, on the 30th, uh, I know we just mentioned his name, but the team activated tight end Noah Fant off the physically unable to perform list to get his season going. And Noah Fant really has a sort of big season ahead of him. He is in a contract year after the Seahawks picked up his fifth year option this past season uh, after his four year rookie contract that the Broncos originally gave him after drafting him 20th overall in the first round of the 2019 NFL draft. Uh, wore off. So a big year for Noah Fant. He did deal with a knee injury towards the end of the regular season last year and did uh, next to nothing in the team's wildcard loss to the 49ers this past year. Uh, and, you know, big, young, physical tight end uh, who is going to try to earn himself a new contract. I mean, his option is pretty big, uh, about $6.8 million. Him and Will Disley helped the Seahawks tight end room uh move into third place in the NFL in terms of how much money the Seahawks have spent across the league in term, well, related to the league in terms of their tight end room. They pay their tight ends the third most, uh, their tight end room, that is. So that's that's an interesting fact if you know how much the Seahawks tight ends are used. Uh, also, not so great news in terms of the injury list. Uh, on the 30th, it was announced that running backs Kenneth Walker the third and Zach Charbonnet both are missing time at training camp. Walker the third has a minor groin strain. He's being held out currently as a precaution so that injury doesn't get any worse. And then Charbonnet, the rookie out of UCLA, uh, is dealing with a shoulder injury. He is out indefinitely. Now, what that means is an unspecified period of time. I know that some people see the word indefinitely and they freak out, but uh, what Pete Carroll, head coach Pete Carroll, and the team said that they want to do at the current moment is really look at that, get more tests on it, and see what they're looking at with that shoulder injury uh, before they proceed with it and cause any sort of further damage. So that's the injury part of it, the sort of uh, not-so-great stuff. I mean, it's nothing that's too, uh, knock on wood, nothing too scary at the moment, but obviously things that need to be worked on, taken care of, uh, and sort of overseen for the Seahawks before they get some of these players into action or any workout really at all. So those two running back injuries do actually open up uh, the running back room. You know, I know that in the past few years, we don't like seeing injuries to running backs because that's a lot of what the Seahawks have dealt with. But young running back uh, out of Georgia, pardon me, not Alabama, Georgia, Kenny McIntosh has showed great speed and great cutting ability uh, in training camp so far. It has impressed a lot of people with his tape. So who knows? I mean, I know that he was a really late draft pick for the Seahawks, and there was a lot of determination for him to kind of show out. Uh, so, hey, maybe Kenny McIntosh backs onto the backs on, uh, bursts onto the field. So 
moving over to team related notes as we continue with the training camp pre-training cramp uh sort of news here on the 24th the t- uh, two days before training camp started the team signed outside linebacker slash pass rusher uchenna nuosu to a three-year 59 million dollar extension it includes 32 million dollars guaranteed with a 15 million dollar signing bonus and the way that his contract works actually created 2.91 million dollars in salary cap space this season uh for a few other things to go on so some some work there the seahawks extend a young linebacker uh, in his 20s get him a a guy that tied for the team lead and sacks last year with daryl taylor and was really a one of the team's most consistent performers last year whether that was you know tackles for loss disrupting plays uh you know getting to the quarterback something that the seahawks have desperately needed in their past few years they lock up uh uchenna after you know what would have been his last year in his contract uh, after signing a two-year deal uh, two off seasons ago, so good, smart move to get Nuosu, you know, lock him up there, and and someone that's been a key performer for the Seahawks team, uh, so to go and get that done was really smart there. Some other sort of related news uh, team notes here uh, is it's training camp. There's going to be a lot of roster moves, players that the Seahawks want to bring to training camp and take a look at, kick the tires on, uh, and give a chance. You know, competition is a big thing, obviously, with Pete Carroll and this this Seahawks organization. On the 25th, before I get into more of those team-related notes uh, and what roster moves, I almost said wa- waiver moves. Uh, on the 25th, the team restructured free safety Quandre Diggs's contract to convert his 2023 salary into a bonus. Uh, which does help move up some salary cap space there. And it's funny because Diggs himself tweeted about it. If you follow Quandre Diggs on Twitter, you know that he is someone who will break news himself. He was uh, actually the first to tweet about the Bobby Wagner deal uh, this past off seasons. Well, yeah, so that was kind of fun. Uh, also on the 25th, the team did sign running back Zach Charbonnet to his four-year rookie deal worth six million eight hundred seventy-six thousand and seventy-nine dollars with a two million dollar uh, seven hundred eighty-four uh, two million seven hundred eighty-four dollar signing bonus. Then we get into the roster moves, uh, making all sorts of space uh, for training camp. Here, the team. On the 25th, waived defensive back James Campbell and Isaiah Dunn, in addition to outside linebacker Alton Robinson. Now, Robinson was an interesting name to see cut, considering that he never really saw a consistent amount of playing time for the Seahawks. He dealt with injuries, uh, and just it didn't work out for Seattle. At this current point in time, I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibility that he gets brought back at some point in training camp or maybe even on the team's practice squad. But right now, uh, the corresponding move to that was signing defensive tackle Roderick Perry. Uh, so that ends the current roster moves. And we get over to the NFL Top 100 list. Now, if you don't know, the NFL Top 100 list is a list compiled every year right before the next season starts, reflecting on the past season. Uh, and it's put together and voted on by players around the NFL. Uh, So it's their opinion on it. A lot of people have their respective thoughts on it, and that's fine. You know, it's uh, it's tough to really look at these lists and put too much stock into it, considering that some players don't see certain guys all the time, uh, and they don't know that their talent level, and it's not necessarily a good evaluator of skill, production, what have you. So we get here this the NFL, the NFL released they're just missed the top 100 and there are three Seahawks in that list uh at 110 free safety Quandre Diggs 102 inside linebacker Jordan Brooks and pictured on your screen there 101 wide receiver DK Metcalf now there was some interesting commentary on this because you could certainly argue that both Metcalf and Diggs should both be in the top 100 list but again not the best uh, sort of way to evaluate talent, production, et cetera. Uh, even former Seahawks cornerback DJ Reed left a uh, tweet about this saying that any list um, that doesn't have DK and Quandre in the top 100 isn't valid. So hard to disagree with that. Uh, but we get into the actual top 100. The rest of the list is still currently being unveiled. So this isn't a finalized list. There will probably be hope so a few more safeties i mean a few more players on this list for the seahawks uh so the current players that have been unveiled already uh in the top 100 are at 77 quarterback geno smith his first time in the nfl's top 100 list after a career year with seattle Uh, at 76 cornerback Tariq woolen who burst onto the scene as a rookie and tied for the league lead in interceptions which is a wild stat in and of itself 
And then at 62, he wasn't wearing a Seahawks jersey uh, during this past season, but he is now and he's back. Uh, at 62, inside linebacker Bobby Wagner uh, is the most recent Seahawk to be named to that list that is being currently unveiled. So we'll probably get some more for you um, when we come back next week. But that is it for the current point in time. We get back into the sort of roster related moves as the uh, Seahawks continue, as I said, to work out this training camp roster. They're going to give guys uh, a chance and see what they've got. You know, competition, again, it's always a big thing with this Seahawks team. On the 26th, the team signed outside linebacker Levi Bell, cornerback Andrew Whitaker, and cornerback Chris Steele uh, while waving nose tackle Jonah Tavai with that non-football injury designation, as we talked about when we got into the injury-related news. Uh, a familiar face was brought back, as I voice crack a little bit there. On the 27th, the team signed linebacker Ben Burkirvin, the former University of Washington standout, uh, who's dealing with some injuries in his career, potentially thought that he might retire, uh, has been signed by the Seahawks, so he gets a chance there. Uh, the Seahawks kind of looking for more outside linebackers and the fact that Jordan Brooks is going to be out. I know Devin Bush has been with the team now, so uh, the linebacker spot outside of Bobby Wagner, uh, inside linebacker at least, and then outside of Nintendo Nuosu and the fact that this team needs more pass rush in general, uh, there's spots to be had there at the linebacker position. So maybe Ben Bergkirven shows out there. He's a little bit undersized, quote unquote, for a linebacker. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if he's able to make any sort of splash to earn himself a spot on the week one roster. Uh, on the 28th, this isn't roster related, uh, quarterback Geno Smith declined an offer to ap appear on the Netflix show quarterback, uh, the season two of it. So, I mean, I understand it. It would have been maybe interesting to see a little bit look uh, into Gino and sort of the behind the scenes stuff, but it makes sense. Probably wants to avoid any sort of distraction. Uh, like some players don't like having hard knocks, which the Jets will be on this year. Also that day, the team signed cornerback Devin Witherspoon to his rookie deal. He became the last rookie in this entire draft class uh, to sign his deal. It's a four year fully guaranteed $31.86 million deal with a $20.17 million signing bonus. So, Good amount of money for the number five overall pick in this year's draft. They get a cornerback who they imagine will start uh, for them immediately to sign his deal. And after missing the first few days of training camp, he's back with the team and getting workouts. And also that day on the 28th, as I mentioned, roster moves. The team signed uh, UW running back, at least last year uh, at UW. He did transfer in from the University of Virginia. Wayne Tulapapa, uh to a deal and waived cornerback Montre Braswell. So that is it for Seahawks related news as they continue training camp. Training camp will continue through the next few weeks. Uh, Preseason games don't start till August 10th. So we'll get to that. Uh, but I imagine that we'll see more roster related moves and things of that nature. Uh, and hopefully some of those players that were on the pup list will get activated uh, by the time we see you again. So uh, 